Good morning. Good oh, a little dark. Little bit dark here in the background. I set my lighting uh, before things began here using uh, with the door open, and then I closed the door, and it got dark. Good morning. Glad you're here with me. Saturday morning. I've been up for a little while, and. Uh, Getting some stuff done, doing some things, reading some things, and uh, waiting for you guys. I don't know what took you so long. <laughs> Good morning. Um, we're going to jump a little bit today um, as we go into Exodus. We're actually going to catch up. Today, today the readings are going to be for the fifth Sunday in Lent. The fifth, I'm sorry, the, the, the fifth week of Lent, the Saturday. Um, and that's, that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to, what happens in the, the previous two days in Exodus, I can summarize when we get there. So that's what we're going to do today. Sunny and bright here today. Sun shining hard. Not going to get that warm. Only going to get into the 30s, I guess. Uh, but warm weather's coming. That's the rumor. Warm weather's coming. I'm hoping for it anyway. Um, the rumor is next week is going to be warmer. I, I don't know. We'll just have to see, but glad you're here with me for a little bit. Let's see who all has joined us here. There's Verna. Good morning, dear. And Kathy. Good morning. Geraldine and Neil. Good morning to you. Jill and John. Good morning. Jerry. Good morning. Brenda. Uh, sunny and 30 through the high of 39. Yeah, it's warming up in Kalamazoo. Glenn, good morning to you. And there's Bob and Jeannie. Good morning to you guys. Let's go ahead and get into this. If you have a, a hymnal, page 295, daily prayer for individuals and families. Oh, by the way, I'm wearing a fishing shirt because I'm I'm uh, anticipating fishing season and warmer weather. Um, yeah, so 295, page 295 in the Lutheran Service Book, if you have one. Daily prayer for individuals and families. That's where we begin each day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hey, Connie and Robin, good morning to you guys. Glad you're joining us here. Um, yeah, no kidding, Connie. Son, son, son. Our psalm today, Psalm 78, verses 52 to, to 55. Then he led out his people like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. He led them in safety so that they were not afraid but the sea overwhelmed their enemies and he brought them to his holy land to the mountain which his right hand had won he drove out nations before them he apportioned them for a possession and settled the tribes of israel in their tents glory be to the father to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now it will be forever amen Obviously, that's talking about the Exodus. Okay, so when we left off with Moses, God had told him to go. He'd pick up your staff and go. He'd given him the signs to give to Pharaoh. He had put up with Moses' whining about um, not being able to speak well. Uh, and finally, he said, your brother Aaron will do the speaking. I'll speak to you. You speak to Aaron. And that's how this is going to work. So uh, he returns. And this is the parts we're skipping over. He returns to Egypt, uh, finds his brother Aaron. Aaron is overjoyed at seeing him. He meets with the people of Israel. They don't really believe what he's saying, not, not buying what he's dishing out. Um, he talks with them, uh, and then he uh, goes, uh, tells people he's going to go before Pharaoh and, and talk to Pharaoh. Um, uh, as, they were, as they were coming 
uh, away from Ruel and his people um, and headed back into Egypt, uh, one thing came up. Um, during the time that they were in Egypt, um, they had begun to neglect the practice of circumcision. Um, and so, uh, or rather, well, he was, well, he was with Ruel, he had begun to neglect circumcision. So uh, their son uh, had not been circumcised and um, God had made a threat uh, to, to not uh, honor him. And so um, uh, they circumcised his son on the, on the way in um, and uh, made, made him a bridegroom or made Moses a bride, whatever. Uh, anyway, circumcised him on the way in. Uh, on the way back to Egypt, and then, and then they they get to Egypt, they get to Aaron, all that good stuff takes place, uh, and finally it's time uh, for Moses to go and see Pharaoh. Here's the last words before we get to today's reading. But the Lord said to Moses, "Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh, for with a strong hand he will send them out, and with a strong hand he will drive them out of his land." So we get to today, we get to Exodus chapter 7. Hey, Grant and Deb and Anne, glad you guys are here. Exodus chapter 7, verses 1 to 25. Here it comes. And the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you like God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron shall be your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you, and your brother Aaron shall tell Pharaoh, to let the people of Israel go out of his land. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart. And though I multiply my signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, Pharaoh will not listen to you. Then I will lay my hand on Egypt and bring my hosts, my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great acts of judgment. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring out the people of Israel from among them. Moses and Aaron did so. They did just as the Lord commanded them. Now Moses was 80 years old and Aaron 83 years old when they spoke to Pharaoh. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, when Pharaoh says to you, prove yourselves by working a miracle, then you shall say to Aaron, take your staff and cast it down before Pharaoh, that it may become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord commanded. Aaron cast down his staff before Pharaoh and his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh summoned the wise men and the sorcerers, and they, the magicians of Egypt, also did the same by their secret arts. For each man cast down his staff, and the, they became serpents. But Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Still Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and they would not listen to him as the Lord said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning, as he is going out to the water. Stand on the bank of the Nile to meet him and take in your hand the staff that turned into a serpent. And you shall say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, sent me to you, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. But so far you have not obeyed. Thus says the Lord, By this you shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, with a staff that is in my hand, I will strike the water that is in the Nile, and it shall turn into blood. The fish in the Nile shall die, and the Nile will stink, and the Egyptians will grow weary of drinking the water from the Nile. Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over their rivers, their canals, and their ponds, and all their pools of water, so that they may become blood. And there shall be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, even in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. 
Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded. In the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants, he lifted up the staff and struck the water in the Nile. And all the water in the Nile turned to blood. And the fish in the Nile died, and the Nile stank, so that the Egyptians could not drink water from the Nile. There was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. But the magicians of all the land of Egypt, uh, uh, but the Egyptians of Egypt, sorry, the magicians of Egypt did the same by their secret arts. So Pharaoh's heart remained hardened, and he would not listen to them, as the Lord had said. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house, and he did not even take this to heart. And all the Egyptians dug along the Nile for water to drink, for they could not drink the water of the Nile. Seven full days passed after the Lord had struck the Nile. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God warned Moses and Aaron that Pharaoh wasn't going to listen. He was going to harden his heart because he had many signs that he uh, was going to do. Uh, and so he was, it wasn't going to be a one-shot deal. Um, they went and dropped the staff on the ground, and the staff turned into a serpent. And the sorcerers, the magicians of Egypt, did the same with their staffs by their dark arts. And But, but then uh, Aaron's staff consumed their staffs, his serpent consuming their serpents. Hey, good morning, Steve. Glad to see you here. Um, then they go out and they meet. Pharaoh as he's coming out in the morning going to the Nile to wash and uh, they warn him that they're going to turn the water to blood. Pharaoh ignores them and God gives the command to Aaron and the water of the Nile, the water of all their rivers, of all their reservoirs, of all the places that they keep their water, of their drinking vessels everywhere, all their fountains in the city turn to blood. And the fish in the Nile die because blood's not something you drink or breathe in, I guess. <clears throat> they die. And the Nile stinks because probably as much of the dead fish is, is of, the, <clears throat> of the blood that's in there. Now, some would say that there's scientific explanations for these things. I, I, it's not necessary, right? It's not necessary. We can go there, but we know that, that God was working his will on these things. And even the, even the scientific explanations that are out there um, would require more time <clears throat> than past here for them to take effect. And this happened for seven days. Um, although in God's mercy, I think we can say that's out of God's mercy, um, the people were able to dig in the sand along the edges of the Nile, and the sand would filter the water so that they would have water to drink. Um, but this is the power of God. You know, He has authority over all creation, and He wants Pharaoh and his servants and his wise men and uh, all the people of Egypt to know um, that the Israelites serve him and him alone. And prog progressively, these uh, plagues are going to get worse. This is the first of the 10 plagues, the water turning into blood. And God is working this to, um, first of all, to show his mercy to Israel, but also to show his authority over uh, other nations. Um, and that he is the only God, and he is the God to be worshipped. Certainly the Egyptians could call on their gods to change these things, but their gods are idols, and idols do nothing for man, right? But we have a God who, when we call upon him, he hears our prayers. Israel called upon him in their suffering. One of the things we missed, I, I, I neglected to say here before we come to this, is that the first time Moses and Aaron go to Pharaoh and ask to let the people go, um, Pharaoh is upset and he refuses now uh, to uh, bring straw for them to make bricks. One of the biggest tasks that the 
Israelites are given is to make uh, mud bricks for the people. And you, you use straw to strengthen the bricks to tie them together uh, to, to create a, a, a mesh inside of the, the mud brick. And uh, Pharaoh normally would bring the straw to the Israelites or have servants bring the straw to the Israelites to make the bricks. But now he wants the same volume of bricks and you have to go get your own straw. Uh, and so that's when he begins to, that's when Pharaoh uh, begins to really oppress the Israelites even more, forcing more work out of them. Um, but God is going to free him from it. As they are enslaved to, to uh, Pharaoh and to Egypt, God also will work through Christ to free us from slavery and to sin. That's the whole point. And we're, we're coming up on Palm Sunday tomorrow with the songs of loud, loud Hosanna. And then we journey into the darkness of Holy Week, uh, Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, uh, the, ending with the, the death of our Lord as he's placed in the tomb, as his blood is shed upon the cross for you. So, to free, so as to free you from sin, death, and hell. So as we look at these events that are taking place in Egypt, which lead up to their exodus, um, remember our Lord and Savior is going through his exodus during Holy Week, his exodus where he will uh, leave uh, through, the, through death, uh, taking sin and death and hell with him away from us. Amen. Let's um, continue with the with the uh, prayer of the day here. If I can find it, there we go. Almighty God, through the resurrection of your Son, you have secured peace for our troubled consciences. Grant us this peace evermore, that trusting in the merit of your Son, we may come to the last, at last, to the perfect peace of heaven, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Uh, I lost my train of thought there. Sorry about that. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Saturday morning, uh, we pray. O Lord, you are my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. You gave your servant David rest from Saul's pursuit and delivered him from the hands of his many enemies. You rescued your apostle Paul from the many trials, but also gave boldness to him and all your holy martyrs who confessed the faith, suffered all, even death, and have received the crown of life. You are a mighty fortress for all who trust in you. When I am afraid, you invite me to come to you for strong protection. When I am convicted of my sin, you call me to repentance and offer grace, mercy, and peace for all offenses. When I am in any trouble, you bid me come to you for help. With great love and patience, you hear the prayers of all who call upon you in faith. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and listen to my cries for mercy. Protect me this day from the devil and all his flaming darts. Deliver me from the dangers of this life that would afflict my body and rescue me from any evil 
that would lead my soul away from you. Thwart the plans of the devil and destroy my faith and grant me even more of your word and spirit so that I may cling to you at all times. Finally, at my life's end, take me up from this valley of sorrow to yourself in heaven. In Jesus' name I, re I pray, amen. And for those who suffer, Lord, in body, mind, or soul, we ask your compassion, especially upon those who have asked for our prayers, Ashley, Peter, Karen, Olive, James, Pat, Lois, Don, Brianne, and all those who call upon your most holy name. Grant them comfort where there is fear, assurance where there is doubt, and always remind them of the grace they've received through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Almighty and merciful, Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings uh, yeah, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our Saturday devotions to a close. Just simple today. Um, nothing, nothing major there. But God's peace be with you. If you have the opportunity, and you all do, uh, to join your brothers and sisters in Christ in worship tomorrow on Palm Sunday with cries of loud Hosanna, do so. Go and be amongst your fellow believers, the cloud of witnesses that we have to the resurrection of our Lord, by whom we've been saved. God's peace be with you, and we will see you Monday morning for our daily devotions. God's peace. <laughs>